Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to talk about traditional bows, different kinds, kind of elementary, but we're going to take it into a little different level on some of the pros and cons to each of these different styles. First off, we're going to talk about long bows we have here on the top, then we'll get into recurves. With long bows, you have an ASL and hill style bow, which is basically your straight limb, uh, kind of classic straight limb type long bow which again i actually have a whole nother video i did uh that should have been out just before this one which will show uh, all the details because an asl style long bow has got a lot of variations to it, a lot of different models to them and a lot of advantages to it it's my favorite kind of bow and i did do a whole video on that so i'm not going to get into it too deep but an asl style bow is a straight limb long bow whether that limbo that limb sets back or string follows or different variations it is a continuous straight limb longbow makes a uh, ASL or hill style longbow um, and that's one option now for the other option for, and I'll, I'll get into some of the details of these other ones but a mild R&D bow reflex deflex so when you see R&D reflex deflex deflex is this part where it curl goes away from the shooter reflex is where it d d dives back into the shooter here and with a mild reflex deflex design, uh, you get a few advantages to it. You get a little bit more speed. Uh, typically, usually, they're going to be a little bit more speed to them. But the mildness of it still makes it have a lot of the characteristics of a, a smoother shooting, simpler bow for the most part. A lot of people like them. I think the majority of bows out there today are a mild R&D style bow. And when you string it, you can see here, you got the, the deflex here, the reflex here, my fancy artwork here. And when it's strung, it still takes that same D shape as a uh, hill style bow does when it's strung. But this would be your mild, if you look at it from here, and you look at that limb design and that shape to it and that contour, that would be a mild reflex deflex bow. Now a hybrid, these hybrids are becoming very popular and they're great bows. I don't have one here, but if you look at somebody like uh, Java Man Archery, which, he, uh, you know, they build some incredible bows, uh, really top-notch, uh, especially their hybrid bows they have are amazing. Um, if you look at theirs, you'll see a, it's a lot more aggressive of the reflex deflex, and there are some advantages to that, which, again, we'll get into. Um, but when they're strong, they kind of take more of a V shape. It's a lot more of aggressive, almost a straight limb to a deflex riser to a straight limb V kind of shape to them. Those are going to be more your hybrid type bows. And then you also have a uh, three-piece takedown longbow, which you can get any of these models in a takedown also. But a common way... Uh, to see longbows now too is in a three-piece takedown model such as this recurve where it will actually be a recurve riser with the shape and every all the advantages you get for a recurve but it will have longbow straight longbow limbs on it uh, whether they're a, a hybrid design with a lot of reflex deflex or a mild reflex deflex or even a straight limb design it'll be a recurve take to, or recurve riser with longbow limbs on it and you can actually unscrew these and then take the limbs off and change out to other limbs. So those are basically your longbow scenarios that you're going to run into. And we'll break them down for you in a minute. And then you have recurves. With recurves, you have your standard three-piece takedown recurve. Uh, recurve is designed or defined by the limb that recurves back towards the back of the bow. This is the back of the bow. The part that faces away from you is actually called the back. This side that faces you as a shooter is called the belly. So they will recurve back oh, to, towards the back of the bow, towards the target. And when, it, when it's strung, the string will rest on the limb. If the string rests on the limb, that qualifies it basically as a recurve. If the string does not rest on the limb, that was how you, you have nothing there. Where the string doesn't touch except for the knock, like you have on a longbow, that would actually classify it as a longbow. And then you also have one-piece recurves. Uh, which is just there is no takedown option on it. It is all made from one piece of wood, and that would be a one-piece recurve type setup right there. So those are basically your your different kinds of bow options. Now, um, what do you get if you're a new shooter? If you're coming into traditional archery or converting from a compound, what's the best way to go? Uh, that's a question that I get quite often. Recurves are generally a good way to start off to. Well, a good way to go when you're transitioning from a compound. Reason being. If you notice, this riser looks very compound-like. 
the grip angle, the stuff like that, the size of it, it's much more compound like. You shoot it a lot more like a compound with a real relaxed, a lot of the pressure right in the web of the hand, uh, kind of designed for a lot of people. It gives you a lot of the same features as a compound. Uh, you can shoot them off the shelf, you can shoot them off a rest, you can still, a lot of them come with sight pin holes so you can actually mount things right on there, put a plunger rest, stabilizer, whatever you want to do. But the transition from a compound to a traditional bow, a recurve is generally going to be easier because the shooting style is a lot more of the same way that a compound is, especially being the grip. The grip is the key. And uh, it, it just lends itself very well to it. Plus there's a lot of nice, nice features to a takedown recurve um, when coming from a compound is you can go to something like this Samix Sage, which I did a review on. It's another video I got on there. Maybe I'll link it at the end of this for you. Um, but with that bow, um, with that Samic Sage and any three-piece takedown, you can order extra limbs. So you may start out with a lighter weight bow with lighter weight, say, 40-pound limbs, and then go up to 45-pound limbs or up to 50-pound limbs. You don't have to buy a new bow. You can just get the different limbs. Like for the Samic Sage, or I want to say they're about maybe 75 bucks is what it costs to get new limbs for it. So they're not, uh, they're, they're not tremendously expensive to be able to swap that out. So it's a nice feature. Recurves are great. They shoot very well, but like I said, coming from a compound world, this is going to be the easiest transition for most people to make. Um, shooting these, you know, you get a lot of control because of that grip style, so there's not a lot of torque you're going to induce in there. Um, just a lot of benefits to it. The nice big open sight window, that, uh, sight window in there that you're getting. Um, the mass, the actual physical mass weight of it is closer to a to that of a compound. So there's a lot of a lot of benefits to switching from a compound to a traditional bow by going to a recurve. Um, recurves are generally faster than longbows, although that has been beaten out by a lot of the hybrids and things like that, that that's not really that relevant. Um, which we'll jump into that here for a second after I finish out with the recurves. Now, advantage to a takedown recurve too is that when you undo these limbs, you can actually unscrew these. I got a, a quiver on there, so I'm not going to, but you can take these limbs off. And this bow breaks down very small. This limb is from here to there. That limb from there to the top. You got the riser in the middle. You can put this in a duffel bag and uh, make it real easy for, for flying with, for transportation. You can fit it in a backpack. If you're on a cougar hunt or something like that, you're going to hike up and then put it together when you're in camp uh, or when you get to the, when you get a, a cat in a tree or something like that. Very easy to take this down and reassemble it quickly. Slap the limb on, tighten it down. Slap the limb on, tighten it down. Put your string on, string it, you're good to go. Very simple design, very functional, great um, thing. I think the majority of traditional bow hunters that are out there actually prefer and shoot recurves more than they do anything else. Um, so they are a, fu a fantastic option uh, in a takedown one. The, uh, the one-piece versions... Um, they are definitely sexy with their lines and they look good. This one obviously being very old. This has been beat up a lot. It was actually my son's first bow fishing bow. Um, so this thing's been through the ringer. Um, but they, they have great lines to them, very pretty bows, but you do not get the takedown feature, but they are a lot lighter in weight. So you do in physical mass weight. They're lighter weight than your, your three-piece bows are. So that does have some features to it, and a lot of people just really like them. So one-piece takedown doesn't matter. The grip, the functionality, all the same, still going to be an easier transition uh, than coming from uh, one coming over from a compound. Now... I'm going to mention this stuff here with all these bows because it doesn't matter what bow it is that you're looking at. Shootability is everything. It's the only thing that matters is the shootability factor, which has a couple fit factors in there. When it comes to shootability, it needs to shoot where you want it, needs to feel comfortable the way you shoot it, it needs to be have a comfortable grip for you and fit you the way you want. Um, and uh, you got to be able to hit what you're looking at with it. That's what matters. That's the shootability of a bow. Can you shoot it well? Do you like shooting it? And is it fun? Those are the characteristics that matter the most. Speed is not in the equation in the world of traditional bows whatsoever. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care what their numbers are they're getting through a quantograph. I don't care what any of that kind of stuff is. None of it matters in a traditional world. Traditional world, it's it's about energy and momentum, and it gets it done. Um, we shoot heavier weight arrows so that we can. Speed is 100% irrelevant in a traditional world. Let me put it to you this way. If you buy a Samic Sage, 
that you get out, you buy from Amazon, or you buy a garage sale one piece takedown or one piece recurve, or you buy any kind of longbow on here, I promise you that if it's 40 pounds or more, it's gonna kill everything in North America that you want to, plain and simple. And if you don't know how to make it do that or you don't believe it, watch or listen to some of my podcasts that I do or pay attention to some of my, my videos I do on arrows and things like that where I show you how to make a bow do that. This is nothing. And I get so tired of people that that'll email me and ask me questions and say, well, my bow is, is advertising. He said it'll shoot 200 feet a second. I'm only gonna, getting 165 feet a second. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's it's completely irrelevant. Does it shoot well for you? Do you hit what you want? It, does it? Uh, is it nice and quiet? Is it comfortable? Do you have a lot of fun with it? Then just hunt with it. It's perfect. Okay. Forget the speed stuff. Let that stay in the modern world. Let that stay in the compound world, the crossbow world, where all that crap matters and they're shooting five grains per pound arrows and stuff like that. In the real world, the traditional bow hunting speed is irrelevant. Get it out of your head. Forget what it says. Don't run it through a quantograph. It's not worth it. None of it matters whatsoever. I cannot say it enough. Shootability is everything. With a traditional bow, you have to be able to hit what you're looking at with it. You need it to shoot well for you. You need it to be comfortable in your hand, and you got to have fun with it. If you have those characteristics, none of that crap matters. Nothing else matters. It's a good bow. Use it. Now, with the longbow stuff, the hill-style bows, the ASL bows, like I said, I have, a, uh, um, I have uh, another video on this that shows you that. Great design to it. Very forgiving. Very... With the the single linear direction of the limb travel on that ASL style bow, they are very 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 forgiving with great cast and it's it's my favorite style bow now. Period, hands down, I love it. Mild reflex deflex, they are what most bows out there today are, um, and they they kind of you know, um, they they give a little more performance typically over a lot of hill style bows. Some hill style bows, not so much, you know, they are right there with them neck and neck. But typically speaking, it's going to basically give you a little more punch to it. You got a little more, you do end up with two directional limb travel um, with the reflex and the deflex, but it is mild enough that it has a lot of the characteristics as a, a hill style bow. Um, you can usually shoot them in a shorter mode a little bit better uh, because of that reflex and deflex, so you can go a little shorter in length. Um, and they're, they're a great bow. They're, they're what the most popular style longbow is out there today with a lot of great benefits. Now, when you get into the, the, the hybrid bows, like I said, you look at like a Java man, like an Elkhart bow, something like that, the, 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 the real V shaped hybrid bows, they are, are, they're becoming really, really popular and there's some benefits to them with that real radical reflex and deflex design you gain capability of being able to have a much longer draw and a much shorter bow package. So you can be down into a 58 or 60 inch longbow with a 29 inch draw or 30 inch draw and still get good performance. And with that real deflex part they have in a riser, it gets that out past that center line. You know, when this thing is unstrung here and you got that center line, it comes down for the string right here. See how far out that is forward of that center line? Well, that nice deflex design to that, when you draw that and you bend those limbs, even though it's a little shorter of a bow, a little bit more aggressive, almost recurve like in its design, because of that deep deflex in there, you end up getting a tremendously accurate, comfortable, smooth shooting bow, even at longer draw lengths. So uh, it end up typically being a very fast bow design to it. So the hybrid R&D bows are, are becoming really, really popular. They're great bows that are out there. Um, and then you have three-piece takedown long bows, like I said, which steal this standard, uh, you know, riser just like this. And they'll put a mild R&D or a hybrid R&D uh, limb on there. And then you get the benefits of the, the takedown recurve for travel and stuff, but you also makes the transition going from a compound to a recurve, this style bow makes it easier. Going from a recurve to a long bow, the easiest transition is going this route here with a three piece long bow, because you can take your same bow and put long bow limbs on this. Uh, and then you can actually have the functionality of a long bow and you can have the riser of a recurve uh, or similar to your compound makes that transition even much easier. Going from a compound to um, to a longbow style grip, 
you do everything so much different with this bow and it's ultra lightweight uh, physical mass um, that it's a little more complicated for a lot of people to go to make a jump from a compound to this. Great stepping stone because of that riser design that's on there being closer to a compound. Going from this bow straight to this is still a little bit of a jump. Going from this bow to having these limbs on this bow is a very smooth and simple transition. And there's a lot of great boyers out there that make those. Going from this straight to this, like I said, a little trickier, but not impossible, especially when you have a little bit of time under your belt with that, that recurve. These, you know, um, some people love them, some hate them, some prefer a recurve, some prefer a longbow. For me, hands down, it's the first longbow I ever got, the second I shot it, I was hooked. Never, ever touched another recurve after that. Stayed with the longbow ever since. So there's a lot of benefits to all of them. There is no right or wrong bow for any particular one person. There is no um, what works good for you may, may not work for somebody else. You know, there's, there's options for everybody out there. But these are basically your different kind of bows. Now, I'm not getting into self bows and all that sort of stuff, or static recurves or horse bows. There's other things out there. But these are basically the ones that, uh, whatever it is that you're looking at, is going to fall into one of these kind of categories. Every one of them is great. Every one of them has their benefits. Every one of them is a favorite of somebody's where something else is something somebody else doesn't like. There is no perfect answer here. Bows are like a pair of shoes. What works for your friend may not work best for you. You have to try them and decide what works best for you. If you're coming from a compound world, I would start right here at a three-piece takedown recurve. That's where my first step would go. Once you get to that point, from there, sky's the limit, anywhere you want to go. Usually from here, majority-wise, people are going from here. Uh, if they go to a longbow, they end up going into either adding to you know, a three-piece takedown limb or a, a hybrid R&D or a mild R&D. That's kind of the route that people generally jump into. Hill-style bows are kind of a, uh, um, a lot of people think of them as a, a, a you know, kind of a specialty flavor. They're not. They're incredible. They're my favorite kind of bow. A lot of major benefits to it. Like I said, I got a video that I'll probably link at the end of this too uh, that I just did on those. That's incredible. Cannot go wrong with any of these. But when you come over from the compound world, it's important that you understand to leave all your modern crap behind you. And what I mean by that is your modern thinking. Thinking that the speed of a bow matters. It's always the compound guys coming into the traditional world that give me these questions or have fits about it. Well, what do you mean these things? Well, you know, I'm only getting 153 feet per second out of my bow. I can't kill nothing with that. I can kill a million things with that. I don't even think my arrows go that fast out of my bows. Um, especially with my shorter draw. So, you know, get, get rid of the speed thing. Get that out of your head. Get out of your head the fact that you can shoot farther shots. And, uh, that you're, you know, if you're coming from a compound world thinking you're going to be able to shoot a deer at 40, 30 yards, you're sadly mistaken in a traditional world. Keep them in close. Keep it there. You, you're coming into this for a reason. That reason is to make it more challenging, to become one with the woods, become one with the animals, be, you know, take it on a deeper level. In order to do that, you have to jump in and make it happen. Forget the longer shots. Uh, you don't need range finders. You don't need any of the bells and whistles. You don't need nothing. You need a, a piece of wood and you need an arrow to go with it with a broadhead. That's the only things that really matter in this whole entire process. Now, what arrow, or I mean, uh, what bow you pick, any of them. Can't go wrong. Price-wise, these here have great variables in here. You can go anywhere from a, uh, you can find these bowls from $100 brand new all the way up to $2,500 brand new. Okay, a lot of these bowls fit into those same categories. Same thing here, a couple hundred bucks all the way up to a couple thousand bucks. A couple hundred bucks all the way up to a couple thousand bucks. You know, a few hundred bucks all the way up to a couple thousand bucks. You know, I mean, uh, you know, a few hundred bucks up to fifteen hundred bucks. It, it just it varies. There's and, and there's a lot of you know, a lot of options out there. The best advice I have for you is to try these. Again, coming from a compound, I'd aim right here first. But if you're already in a traditional world and you want to start spreading your wings. Don't just jump for one or the other because your friend does. Give these things a try. Find out what's best for you. I went to a mild R&D bow because that's what I was had given to me as a gift for my very first longbow uh, by one of my best friends, John. He, he had it built for me for helping build his house. And uh, I went right to that from this recurve right to that bow and I never turned around and looked back. I stayed with this for over 20 years shooting these bows, which were great bows, don't get me wrong. Then I switched to one of these. 
Now my whole game's changed. This is absolutely my favorite. I, I wish I would have went to this a long time ago. Point being, try these things out out there. There are shows that happen around all the all winter long. There's winter, spring, and summer. There are traditional shoots happening everywhere. There are people on forums. Uh, you go on to Trad Gang. Uh, you go on to Leather Wall or uh, Traditional Archery Society. These kind of things. There's people out there that live close to you that shoot these kind of bows that would be more than happy to let you try one of their bows and see what you think of it. Or go to a boyer that's in your area and ask him and you can walk into his shop and pick up a bow and shoot it. Uh, so there's options. Uh, you got uh, RMS gear, Rocky Mountain Specialty gear out there in Colorado. They have like more bows in stock than any other place in the world where you can go there and try every single one of them. So if you're making a trip out west somewhere, make a, maybe make a plan to stop in there and try them. But give these all a shot. See what works for you. There is nothing that is better than the other for everybody. The choice is 100% yours. Every single thing on here will kill animals all day long and do it very efficiently, quickly. And this will kill an animal just as quick and good as this will. And this will kill them just as quick as good as that will. There is no right or wrong on here. There is no better than the other. It's just what matters most to you. Take your time, research these a little bit, figure out what works best for you, and then uh, give it a shot. And then give other ones a shot too. Like I said, I would, I would test these out. But if you're coming from the compound world, I would head right there. The advantages to a, a takedown three-piece recurve with the riser design and the mass weight to it and all the things that kind of make it feel a lot more like your compound that you're used to is definitely a win-win. From there, anything you want to do, sky's the limit. Or go right from the compound to any of these. Doesn't doesn't matter. But there's options there for you. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.